I'm getting thirsty. Ah, uh, yes. I wonder what Missy would be like if she had Alzheimer's, if she would be like one of the mean ones, or if she would just be like a little kid. <laughs> yeah. I, would hope, I would hope that she would forget the last, like, say, 35 years and revert to 15-year-old Missy. Jesus, God. 15-year-old Missy was just, she was terrible. She was a bitch. She was, she was fun, mean. though. Yeah, she was pretty fun. <laughs> so this next one that I opened and forgot to talk about, this Golden Road Mango Cart Mango Wheat Ale. Just mango. So it's it's very similar to the other one. Um, same scenery, but it's like done in yellow with a little bit of green and some like some a little bit of brown and some blue. It's quite nice looking. Just a, you know, regular old so, can of mango beer. So I'm, in, I'm interested to try this one. Because my uh, smoked mango hob porter oh is gosh. getting... Oh, no. Very Jesus foamy. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of head. Well, um, that one I also was the one that I did oh, drop. okay. That's the one you dropped. Okay. So, but yeah. But I, I, I'm wanting... Ron always gets all the head. That's right, he does. Because I'm of a bitch. Yeah. Head. <laughs> oh, shit. Missy's giving herself head now. That's right. But I'm, I'm wanting to... Uh, since my, ma- my smoked mango hob porter is so close to ready, I'm wanting to see how their mango level compares to the mango level I have in my own. Mine's a dark one versus this light one, but it's still a worthy comparison. This is also right, it is. light and slightly hazy. I don't think it's as hazy as the last one, but it's hazier than the first one. That's right, and I think it's lighter than both of them, which is really weird. It's not bad, just weird. So I, I'm uh, vaguely excited. One of the guys from work, uh, I was talking to him about craft beer and, and making beer and shit, nipples. and um, he gave me the remains of a Mr. Beer kit. Yes, Ooh, I saw that you saw had that. that. Um, it doesn't have any of the shit in it, but I've seen how the Mr. Beer kits are. They're 100 extract, 100% extract brewing, which is not how I do it. I do all grain. But it came with this, like, three and a half gallon, three gallon uh, fake beer thing. Like, it's the fermenter in it. And looking at it, I have decided exactly what I'm going to do. When the mango habanero porter is ready, I'm going to put, basically, fill that bitch up and throw it in the fridge. And then just have my own cold beer more or less on tap right there. That's fucking hilarious. Because it'll fit. So I was sitting there thinking I would love to get a kegerator and some kegs and keg this shit this round. But I don't want to spend the money right now. So it's a great idea. And then the rest of it, I will bottle. Good idea. And I might bring some for you ladies next round. Cool. I'm excited. I'm excited to try it. Since we all kind of came up with the flavors. So this is definitely oh, this, this is a good. lot fruitier fruitier notes. It for does. Those. I had a weird smell. What was that? It was almost cotton candy-ish. I don't know. Maybe it might just be something. It reminded me of something. I can't think of. What so it I've is. definitely got the mango flavor. It's more mango flavor than mine. Ooh, definitely good with the but mango. My, this is pure mango flavor. Reminds mixed mm. with smoked and habanero. So. Mmm, that one's really good. This is definitely juicy. Oh, it is def- It is juicy. I don't know if I like this one or the last one better. I think they're both equally good. I think I like this one better. I think I might like this one a little better, too. I know I like this one better. I kind of like it better than the first one. Yeah. Yeah. The first one was good, but I like these two better than the first one. This one almost reminds me of a cider. I'm going to say oh, I, I definitely like this one better. I can't tell if it's because I've been on, like, mango-flavored things because of my own. Mm-hmm. But this definitely has a more of a fresh, juicy mango hit than mine. But mine's got other stuff in it, so I'm digging it. I like it. Oh, so, so my dog's got raped. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was some uh, a couple child weekends molestation ago. Going we we on. did have that. That was so, that was funny. Yeah, we went to a party, and our friend's dog like kept humping my poor dogs, and they're gonna need therapy now. And I feel like... Like, I'm surprised her dog doesn't need a hip replacement as much humping as it was doing. Right. And since she's getting ready to move, I feel like she's going to have to register her address now. <laughs> register her dog as a sex offender. <laughs> That's so fucking funny. Carl, why are you on the sex offender list? I'm, I'm going to make a fake sex offender registry page for her dog. <laughs> and send it to her. <laughs> You should definitely do that. That's funny as fuck. Like, dude, oh my God, look who's on the sex offender list. She'd be like, what, who? And then it'd be like, 
<laughs> yeah. I could drink like Please three more. That. I'm going to. I could drink three gonna, more of those right now. That gonna, is that good. I'm going to send it like as a group chat to you, me, her, and Ron, so that way we can. <laughs> I wish I had a damn picture of her fucking... I don't want to ask her I for a picture of her dog. Find one on I, Facebook. I'm thinking I could. Oh, you troll her page. You'll find one. I'm oh, yeah. pretty sure I could. <laughs> so fucking God. funny. <laughs> Just like Photoshop Wishbone, but as a rapist. Well, I was thinking <laughs> of that, too. Because he's... The, the dog's the same kind of dog as well as the Wishbone from the PBS Kids. Yes. So just Photoshop wishbone as a rapist, hard times, maybe a tattoo on him. Oh, that's great. Dude, this dog like would not leave my puppies alone, <laughs> man. Like they were in my lap. I had both of them in my lap at one Fearing point. For and their he was, lives. Like, trying to like he had his front paws up on the chair trying to like He he had his front paws in the chair and was humping the chair <laughs> he, in the <laughs> air because he's just like Puppies, puppies, I need to rape the children. I need to rape the children. He he was a, mostly asserting his dominance on the boy dog. And so, like, you know, he would get on the girl dog, and your boy dog would, like, almost, like, Erica was like, he's protecting her. And then, like, he would stand in front of Carl, and I was like, no, I think he's jealous of her. <laughs> <laughs> My dog is not gay. <laughs> your dog is okay totally if he is. Big uh, gay homo well, dog. Now, now, she would just, like, lay there, and it's like, okay. I had plenty of gay cats, so a gay dog would be okay. That's right. Don't be gay, Sparky. Don't be gay. <laughs> she feeds him plenty of Bud I just, Light. I just don't... He doesn't have gay vibes. Maybe he's bisexual. Yeah. Right. She just can't tell yet. He's too so, young to tell. So in terms of like super gay, awesome things, I know they haven't seen it, but I saw the Barbie movie last weekend and oh my God, that thing was fucking amazing. I will not be giving spoilers. That's right. Other than to say that it is like the most surprisingly feminist movie I have seen in ages and that it has gotten that much press and that it's that big is fucking amazing. Uh, apparently it's broken. It, the, it premiered last weekend and it has made the most movie, most money for any movie directed by a woman ever. And they just said it broke another record. Yesterday was Monday and it made basically the most money for any movie on a Monday ever. Nice. Um, there were parts in it that I am by no means, I am not a Barbie nerd, but there was like in-jokes and parts in there that was like, man, if I was a Barbie nerd, there'd be so much shit I am fucking missing here. That's really funny. Maybe you need to become a Barbie nerd That's now. right. There you go. I, I didn't know enough to notice a cameo in the Barbie movie. Oh, yeah? Yes. That's funny. Um, there is a point in the Barbie movie where there is an old lady, and said old lady is uh, Barbie. Nice, the original so, Barbara, what is it, Barbara... I, I kept saying Hinton or Hilton or something like that, mm. I don't know her actual last name. I thought it was Rogers or something. Bar- yeah, it was something with an H, but basically, there's a part in the movie where, you know, there's things happening, and there's this really, really old lady, and it was like, huh, that, oh, who, who, like, it... Nah, nah, she can't be alive still. She's got to be dead. And when I got out of the movie, I Googled it, and sure enough, oh, wow. it was the actual Barbie that it was based off of, because the chick that invented the Barbie doll... Handler. Handler, okay, thank you. Um, based Barbie off of her daughter. And the real lady is 82 years old, and the line was something like, you know, Barbie was sitting there and looked at her, and she's like, oh my God, you're beautiful to this old lady. And the lady's like, I know. That's funny. <clears throat> um, but it was like I've said this to several people now like all the hate that the Little Mermaid movie got earlier this year because they made a black aerial if those same people would have caught any sort of wind of the Barbie movie and the level of like you know feminist uh, gay vibes coming out of that thing they would have burned the fucking world down go watch it it is awesome Aren't they kind of burning the world down now, though? Well, they always are. I know. But, like, it is the perfect antithesis to that shit. Like, fucking women power totally in 100%. Also, Will Ferrell was in it. I, I saw that. I I didn't realize it until I was watching it, but Will Ferrell's in it. I feel like I saw him in a preview or in a background picture of a uh, thing. Of one of the... But... Uh, yeah, I, posters. I was really hoping these two could come. She was out of town. Ariana was otherwise busy. But... Uh, yeah, I'm a Barbie girl in a Barbie world. 
Ronald Dude, is the Barbie girl. I thought we that song forever, and now no. I've like been hearing it, and I'm like, Jesus, God damn it, right. not again. Well, like, not whole, this nightmare again. Come like, on, Barbie, let's go party. Well, like the whole thing of it was like you did, went through the entire movie and didn't hear it, and then in the credits there was a remix version that just fired up. It was like, ah, there you go, I've there been you go. It. That's so. Funny. There you go. I've been hearing it on like Instagram reels and shit um, like that. But I, I absolutely enjoy the shit out of it, and Francis did not care for it. She really? was like. The Barbie Horse Adventure movie or something was better. The Barbie Horse Adventure <laughs> movie. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, now, if you're a hardcore, like, straight-up Republican, I'm 100% straight, no gays, no blah, mm-hmm. blah, blah. Yeah, probably won't. Barbie's probably not your target audience there, guys. You should probably skip that one. But chicks, anyone with a little girl that wants to be empowered, go watch it. I'm going to watch it with Logan and also, Erica and her friends. Also... Expect complete batshit insanity. Don't expect anything less. That's so funny. So what do we say about this beer? It is a 5%. It is juicy, and I want another. I feel like even though there was a bunch of head, it was like not very carbonated, which it wasn't too bad. It well, it could have been the, the head carbonating out there. Right. It, it mango cart? Yes. Okay. Reminded me of a cider. But It was, it was mangoey and sweet. I'm going to go with a straight up four on that one. Like I said, after I throw that one, threw that one back, I want another. I, I, I was going to go with a four on that one. I, I could drink. I feel like I definitely drink like a whole pack of those myself. How did, how did we describe it now? Um, Juicy, sweet. 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 Cider-like, which is probably not a thing. Refreshing, juicy. Cider. Juicy. Mm. I kind of get a wheat taste out of it, too, a little bit. Well, I feel like that was sugary. Yeah, see, I'm still feeling that these are the same, like, wheat ale base with different flavorings. Yeah. Something like that, maybe. Um, sugary? Mango. A little bit hazy. Mango. I have a mango. Uh, refreshing. Cool. So, anything else? Ronald, I know you watched. Did you watch Oppenheimer? I did watch Oppenheimer. I I don't. I've not seen any previews. I know nothing about what that so is about. Oppenheimer. Um, I think the only time I'd ever heard that phrase was on. I swear they used to say it on Animaniacs. So Oppenheimer is the guy who was who's considered the father of the atomic bomb. Okay. Um, he was a uh, you know physicist. Okay. From like UC Berkeley and shit, and then later he like moved to some different places but basically like in the same vein as like the albert einsteins and level brilliance okay and he was a theoretical physicist and went together with a few other people um he founded the uh los alamos uh nuclear research facility and literally that is where they you know did the math did all the science and invented the atomic bomb they did the first atomic bomb testing there um, the Oppenheimer movie, which we saw the day before, was heavy. Like, Schindler's List heavy. Okay, wow. Like, it was the, the, the Barbie-Oppenheimer combo where they say watch Oppenheimer first and Barbie. Yeah, Barbie is the exact opposite in terms of, like, seriousness. That's funny. But, um... I kind of, I, I saw people were watching them together or, like, very soon after, which is really weird. It, but we then decided that, like, that'd be five hours, maybe six hours worth of movie, and that's a lot of movie. Right. Um, but Oppenheimer there just goes through, like, it's a biopic, so it goes through mo- his life. It kind of starts off with him and, like, you know, a teenager, and he had, like, some of his issues as a teenager, and then going to college, uh, it really picked up when he started going to college, because... One of the things that when he went to college, he went over to Germany and a bunch of European schools because literally those kinds of math and physics stuff were not taught in America because it just didn't exist yet. We didn't have that type of math. So he had to go to Germany and different places, which at that time it was Nazi Germany. And he was given a lot of shit for that. Later on, because he was in UC Berkeley, there were a lot of, like, you know, communists, and it was the time of, like, you know, the 40s and 50s when, you know, the, the, the FBI was out looking for commies, and everybody was a commie everywhere. Right. And if it wasn't for the fact that he was so damn brilliant about what he did in his theories, like, literally, they wouldn't have recruited him and given him a government security clearance 
to be at Los Alamos and study the nuclear weapon because they were there's legit fears about him giving his information or passing information to the Russians, which you know the Russians were working on their own bomb too, and they didn't they weren't nearly as advanced as we were. Gotcha. Um, but a very long movie. Um, I feel like it would be one that I would not want to watch. I feel like I would watch this one. It is a good. It's a good movie. It's a good biopic. For me, it's one that I could only watch in a theater and enjoy because any distractions around would totally ruin it for you. Right, I could see that. Know, it's, it's Which dry. I'd be easily distracted, so yeah. It, it, it's very dry. So, like I said, it's the complete opposite of where Barbie is, like something bright and shiny every three seconds. Oppenheimer is very slow, methodical, very heavy, important topic, especially these days with like Russia and all their nukes and all the north korea shit fun fun um he shit i'm not oppenheimer i don't mind spoiling by the end of it um it was like towards the basically towards the end of his like career they kind of ended it where he lost his government security clearance and there was like one one dude who was a senator who just for whatever reasons, I feel like you shouldn't spoil this, Ronald. There you go. I would actually like to watch. Yeah, this she, she, she okay, well, was like, hmm, she's not saying anything. Well, Maybe right, she doesn't care. I won't spoil it. But <laughs> Oppenheimer is good. Ronald's like, I don't give a shit about whether you want to watch it. I'm not. I'm fucking spoil Plus it. Our audience might want to watch it. Right. Well, see, I have problems. Some with of the two people that listen to us might want to watch it, Ron. See, my thing is, I have problems when it's like historical stuff because it's like, well, it's kind of already a historical record. If you knew that shit, you might have an idea. But you don't know that shit. Well, fine, no, I don't. Sure. <laughs> but the important part is, is like you know, uh, when they made it, like from an, the like actual filming perspective of Oppenheimer, they did their damnedest to use zero CGI anywhere they could. So, like the special effects were all practical, like actual special effects. They didn't obviously go so far as detonating a real atomic bomb, but they used a lot of real pyrotechnics. Nice. That sounds pretty cool. So. Everything you see, they, they said, was pretty much as little CGI as possible, which in this day and age is fucking awesome. That is true. Um, oh, and the Barbie movie, as far as special effects, apparently at one point they ran out of pink paint, painting things pink. I uh, heard you say that earlier at one point before that movie actually came out when it was still like, you know, just being advertised. But see, they literally ran out of pink paint for Barbie. I feel like I don't care about watching the Barbie movie. I didn't care about it until I was kind of like, I want to do something with my boys. I want to, and like, ev- like, a lot of friends were like, "Dude, that movie's funny as shit." And I was like, I want to see why it's so funny. It reminds funny. me of all the gay movies April used to. All make the me gay watch movies. Movie. Truthfully, truthfully, uh, the ex April used to have like find these like weird cult gay films. That's the only way I can. Do- they were all independent, and they were always kind of fucked up. Had a weird message. There's one she had, it just reminded me, it keeps jumping to mind, called But I'm a Cheerleader. But I'm a Cheerleader. And it was about this, like, you know, perfect little prissy girl who, you know, great life, you know, day in the high school jock, and then all of a sudden she decided she was gay. She's like, but I can't be gay because I'm a cheerleader, but I'm a cheerleader. And she started hanging out with, you know, chicks, and yeah. It's been like 20 years since I've seen that one, but still. Cool, cool. But it reminded me of that in, like... The departure of what I expected from Barbie to what it actually is, like golfs, just massive golfs between like, oh, they'll have a little feminist message. No. That's so funny. No. Dude, I think I've seen that movie, but I'm a cheerleader. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've seen that. That's so funny. It was one of those deals where like back in the day I worked YouTube. at, like I worked at Hastings back in the day and I got a free rental every day, so... You know, she'd be, you know, go to work, go to work, like, hey, pick this movie up, that movie up, and, you know, infinite free movies, you'd watch everything on the shelf back in the day, because there was a huge shelf to pick from. Oh, yeah. So, yeah.